Rastafari, right? greetings and love family. We are here right now. Roots Juice, Zion Heights, joined by a very, very, very special guest once again. So we are joined today by our brother Ras Benji, Ja Benji, who happens to be the manager of operations at Fairfield House, which is the house of His Majesty in Bath, UK. Um, somebody who I know is give, gives a lot of strength to many, many people and many Rastafari and many people around the world who love to learn about the history of His Majesty and, you know, untold stories because Fairfield House in the last so many years has become so more prevalent, we can say, and still it's becoming more and more. So, man is a scholar, a historian, man is the one who leads the Sunday tours at Fairfield House, one of the ministers of Rastafari and History School, and it has been an honor to trod with the eye on the road the past few weeks. Um, and personally, the eye has given eye a lot of strength over the time, so it's an honor to be reasoning with the eye right now. Um, so could the eye please introduce yourself for the listeners? Tell us a bit about yourself and really and truly what, what brought you right now to Ethiopia, January 2024, when many people would have told you it's not safe to travel, don't go. Rastafari. Yes, give thanks to your mic and give thanks to all the listeners out there. And I'm Ras Benji. As you gave a brilliant introduction, I'm the operations manager at Fairfield House. And I'm here now in Ethiopia to refresh myself. It's been seven years since I last visited Ethiopia. And in that time, there's been many changes. There's things that you can't see, there's things that you can see. And these things are, you know, help to refresh me educationally and give a wider context to the things that I'm always talking about at Fairfield House. Um, but they also enrich you spiritually, you know, when you know who His Majesty is. Um, and so for a time when it's quite quiet at Fairfield House at the moment, there's some restoration going on. We're not open to the public. Um, I could have gone anywhere in the world, you know, for a little break. But for me, Ethiopia is the place. You see, give thanks. And like that, I say, it's been seven years, which is also very mystical. Um, since that I last came, I think your involvement in Fairfield House has greatly, you know, become more so. So could that I tell us, like, how long have you been working at the house and how did you first get involved? And um, what kind of activities, you know, what, what purpose does the house serve today in the UK? Uh, yeah, so certainly, yeah, seven years ago, I was just a volunteer at that time. Um, I've been, I first visited Fairfield House about 13 years ago. Um, and the se on the second visit, I was just overwhelmed. Um, I had a special dream of the emperor even when I got home. And... Um, I always said from that time that I think Fairfield House is going to be very important to me. So I volunteered. There wasn't a museum at that time. Um, they weren't open to the public at that time. Um, the celebrations were quite spontaneous at that time um, that happened. And um, in 2019, there was a community interest company formed so that the house and the communities of the house could speak with the local council properly um, and I was asked to be a director at that time um, which was such a great honour and that's when I wasn't living in Bath at that time but then I set my sights to be like yes I'm going to do what I can um, to move to Bath and I kind of grew up a bit more in the west country as well so like leaving London after a long time living in London yeah it was, it was like a, a moment it was a shift it was a moment of change and then since then I've stepped down as the director at Fairfield House to become the operations manager of Fairfield House and it is a, a huge, huge honour and responsibility. Um, it's not always a, a, a blissful job. Um, you're kind of working at the coal face. So in the midst of all the different community happenings and other um, purposes that the house serves and that could be you know I think we counted up last year 
and there was 91 different kind of events in the course of the year so a third of the year there was something happening at Fairfield House so it's a very busy space for com different communities and the first community is the elderly people of Bath because the emperor left it for the elderly so um, you uh, in my role you know I'm trying to balance all these different um, needs and purposes of the house and make sure that everyone is um, you know well fulfilled especially people visiting to learn about Emperor Haile Selassie and his history in Britain and the Ethiopian royal family and what happened to them. You see, truly give thanks. And um, like you mentioned there that you even relocated to Bath um, to be closer to the house. Um, and obviously about having 91 events, it's similar to the Ethiopian calendar. Ethiopia is full of holidays and full of celebrations. And we know that at Fairfield, there's also involvement of the Ethiopian community, diaspora, the Rastafari community, the local community that come together for these events. So could you tell us a little bit about um, those connections and the importance of, you know, the preservation of this heritage, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, there is the, uh, just like you said, there's the local people of Bath that the emperor gave the building to, and that's the elderly people and other local people um, that resonate with the emperor's legacy there. So there'll be schools that visit Fairfield House, and we do outreach to different schools um, during, during Black History Month especially. Then there's the Rastafari community, and there is the Ethiopian community, and then many other people across the world that resonate with Haile Selassie and his legacy. Um, and they all have their different calendars. So Rastafari have just celebrated Gena on the 7th of January. Um, and the Ethiopian community at Fairford House, which is from across the country, small community in Bath, bigger in Bristol, London, Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool, will all travel to Fairfield House and they tend to celebrate a week or two after the celebration itself at Fairfield. So I'm quite excited when I get back. Um, it's going to be the Ethiopian Christmas Gena along with Tim Cat celebrated yeah. together on Sunday the 28th of January. You say, yeah. And I think you're going you're gonna to be giving a presentation about your time in Ethiopia. So let's get into that a little bit as well like um that i has been here two weeks we're just over and um let me just ask the i then to tell us some of the things and some of the places you've experienced in these two weeks uh well first i think it's like got to understand my motivations and what what i wanted to see and do in ethiopia and um as someone that when I'm in the UK, you know, I spend my, a lot of my free time, I'll go to another place that the emperor visited, you know, and see if there's any trace of his legacy, of his footprint in that place. You see. So prior to coming um, to Ethiopia, as you well know, because you've been so helpful on the journey, um, I had a big long list of places that some may have been possible, some may have not been possible. Um, to visit relating to this legacy of the emperor and what is left, what remains, you know. Is that place still in use for its original purpose? Has the purpose changed? So this is what I came to observe and see because this is what my day-to-day -day work is in the city of Bath. Um, so it's been, it's been amazing, it's been all that and more because I think on an average, you know, on a daily, we've hit about three, sometimes four different historical places um, relating to the emperor. And thanks to Ja Rastafari, all doors have been open for us, you know? So um, it's, it's been an amazing blessing. So I'm, yeah, overwhelmed still. It's going to take a little while to process. Yeah. Um, but this is the exclusive interview. You say. I'm still in Addis Ababa at the moment. And I just hope uh, that, yeah, Ethiopia itself can find a nice period of peace, you know, for the people as well. Because um, we've seen some tension 
um, on our on our journey also. Uh, and they need to remember His Majesty. Yeah. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Because if if um, with remembering His Majesty, a lot of things are going to get easier when you understand what he was trying to do for the country. You know, not try and go against that. So yeah, I'm very thankful for the journey overall and all the lessons, observations that I've made during this time. They're really going to strengthen me in my work for His Majesty from here. You, you say, and like, obviously, do you think the knowledge of the teachings of His Majesty would help to bring about this peace? And you know, as I say, improve certain situations. Like um, we saw today, to shout out one place, um, we were blessed enough to have a look at the Jubilee Palace, which is one of the places where His Majesty actually lived with the royal family after moving from the University Palace, um, Genet Liul. So, for example, what could the I say about the preservation of these places, like in Ethiopia, for this generation right now? Um, well, on the one hand, it's very, it's, um, it's very good um, to see that these places are being open to the public and that they have been preserved or that the conservation of those places are, are, is being considered. On the other hand, there some things may be questionable. Um, we've seen that historic symbols of the emperor are taken down and there's no trace of them in that historical place anymore so whilst they might have plans for that historical place they've altered the heritage of the the place you know and they're probably going to put some modern fencing there without the symbols of the monarchy um, and it just seems that seems very thoughtless um, on the, on on that hand, and then it's constantly been raised to me as I've been travelling around the juxtaposition between you know these amazing parks that there are, which yeah. I see and I think that that is actually very good for the country, you know, for young people, yes, for mental health, for physical health. That's very that's very good, um, but at the same time, there's um, great ethnic tension and war and suffering um, so yeah that's the best way yeah. I can describe it yeah it's a very good point that I raise because you know these parks and everything as the I say is great this is the capital city of Africa so these things are needed because it's a diplomatic city you have people coming from all over the world then at the same time the level of suffering you know there needs to be more of a balance so this is a great point to raise. Um, we will forward on. I will shout out a, a couple of other places that we touched. Um, the Blattengitter Haroi Reading Room. I have to ask the A about it in this exclusive reasoning. You know what I mean? Because it's quite an exclusive painting. And um, what can I tell us about this? The Revelation of St. John. Uh, yeah, it's many, many years ago, over 10 years ago, that I first had my own revelation. Um, I remember exactly where I was at that time. I was in the Church of Haile Selassie, my first ever time visiting the Church of Haile Selassie. It's sitting in the service there, frankincense is billowing out. This is in Barbados, um, St. Thomas, I think it is, Barbados. And um, frankincense billowing out this small wooden church building. And where I was sitting um, in, the, in the church, on my left hand side was this revelation scene picture with the emperor standing before it. And so while I was in the meditation in the church praying and so forth, the, I looked, kept looking to my left at this picture. And then at one point it just hit me like, what is this picture that his majesty standing is all about? Like there's literally a war in going on in heaven, you know? Yeah. And the emperor is depicted in the war in heaven, in the revelation. Yeah. So then, like, from that, I kept searching for ages and ages and ages through different, like, I had access to different academic articles at the time, in the journals and so forth. 
and um, I finally found an article that was like with a very good description of background of the of the painting um, and it was painted by a British painter called Beatrice Plain in the 1940s and she was it was a top secret project that she was working on in Ethiopia at that time um, she was a writer she had written about Lalabella and other places in Ethiopia but she was also an artist and um, the title of the painting is the revelation of saint john so the book of revelation you see and people have a lot of things that they think about rastafari um but to me it's just like this painting and the description of it which details that here the ethiopian emperor um is shown as the incarnated messiah um in the scene of revelation as Rastafari, all I do is agree. <laughs> I agree with that, you know, because that's what I, I am seeing. And see. World War II and the, the total destruction that was going on at the time and the Emperor's moral place in that, not just at that time, but eternally, because on his shoulders is peace, uh, equal rights, um, visions, and, uh, you know, just that... Um, ideology of that there can be a better world and that we could work to with, with each other the emperor said that you know what a wonderful world that it could be if only everyone respected the golden rule you know yeah. you know like so he had he had that visionary idealism um, for a greater world and as humanity we haven't reached that racial equality we haven't reached that nuclear disarmament we haven't reached that universal brotherhood sisterhood we haven't reached those things you know so um for me it, i understand like for me that painting it resonates it's very special and even in the room where i sit at fairfield house um working away um, when i'm doing admin tasks and so forth um the that i have a small picture um, that is of the emperor standing in front of that painting and then there's a mystic and uh, enlightened understanding as well because at Fairfield House Haile Selassie his imperial majesty lost his best friend Blatingeta Haroi yeah. in, 19, in 1938 so Blatingeta Haroi um, he was Ethiopia's greatest respected intellectual He's like a symbol of enlightenment, a symbol of learning. So for the emperor to put that, to return to Ethiopia, build a national library and archive, and then to have this painting in the Blatangeta Haroi reading room, reading hall, yeah. it is, um, it's like a message. It's like education yeah. can lead to your understanding of who yeah. I am. Yeah, in the same room that you have like ancient Book of Enoch and ancient Giz texts and all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. So I requested um, to my brethren, um, Jao Mike, Ras Sam, Getu, Azuvas as well, and uh, that we could go, we we should go there. And no one in our group had been had been there before. Yeah. yeah. And when we went to the library as well. Um, people we were just very uh, welcome um i don't think they have visitors very often we showed exactly what we wanted to see um and then what i was struck with walking into the room there's blatangeta heroi's photograph um on the outside of the room and it says that it's his reading room and then you go inside and it's total silence and it was full of students and they were all studying and their room and the legacy of the emperor was totally alive and then you look over to your right hand side and you see this ginormous mural of the revelation of saint john and the total silence was juxtaposed by the feeling inside <laughs> of how i wanted to you know um just exclaim jar rastafari because wow to stand in front of this this painting after so many years it was unbelievable so we observed the painting we took some photographs 
Um, and then I just became very conscious that I don't want to be a person that is disrupting what the emperor left this room for. So we quietly left the room respectfully, you know. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, it was it was very moving. It was to, to see that alive and well legacy, which is exactly what we have at Fairfield House. The emperor left it for the elderly. Their elderly care will still go on through the week in the building. And so I know that nothing, and part of my job is to protect the Bemska service from the other things that his Imperial Majesty, the greatest man of the millennium, you know, yeah. that he, his legacy brings put that popularity element. People can turn up at any time and so forth. And so we have to protect what the emperor actually left the building for. So yeah. when you're in that space where the legacy is alive and well and it's like a special, special thing, um, you have to respect that and that's really important. Yeah. So it was so moving that I went back a second time, but this time I came armed with a book and okay. I sat there reading for an hour okay. um, and as did Getu with me and that was, that was very special because I felt like I was using the room for its purpose. You see. Yeah, and it's like, you know, these places are also sacred spaces, so it's important to, as that I say, move respectfully. Um, so there's two more sacred places that you touched upon there. You mentioned Lalibella. You also mentioned your office at Fairfield House, where I believe it also overlooks the sacred chapel. So this chapel has a connection with Addis Ababa, um, this was the first Ethiopian Orthodox chapel in the UK, set up in the grounds of Fairfield House by His Imperial Majesty and Her Imperial Majesty. Um, what could that tell us about the connection and the mystics, let's say, between these two churches? Mm -hmm. 